Hi, my name is Asus Alvarado from Dharmi Cinema. Welcome to our training video. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to install a Dharmi Digital Cinema server. This procedure will cover what you need to learn so that your server's installation is successful. Before we begin this procedure, you will need to obtain KDMs from your distributor that coincide with your new Dharmi server serial number. So let's begin. Before you install a Dharmi Digital Cinema server, please follow these important installation requirements. In order to ensure your safety and optimal performance of your Dharmi Digital Cinema server, select your setup location carefully and make sure that equipment is used properly. Do not install the server in extremely hot or cold environments. The maximum operating ambient temperature is 35 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Select an installation environment that has good ventilation and away from direct sunlight. Never restrict the airflow through the server's fans or vents. When installing equipment into a rack, always distribute the units evenly within the rack on a level surface. Otherwise, hazardous conditions may be created by an uneven weight distribution. Power requirements for electrical equipment vary from area to area. Please ensure that your digital cinema server meets the power requirements in your area. If in doubt, consult a qualified electrician or your Dharmi Labs dealer. Use only an AC power supply. Never use a DC power supply. Maximum power consumption is 300 watts. Connect the unit only to a properly rated supply circuit. Reliable earthing or grounding of rack mounted equipment should be maintained at all times. Allow only a trained Remy Labs dealer or qualified professional engineer to repair or reassemble the server. Apart from voiding the warranty, unauthorized engineers might touch live internal parts and receive a serious electric shock. Open the shipping box and remove the carton containing the included accessories. Open the accessory box and verify that you have received all the proper accessories. These include two AC power cables, one VGA cable, one AES out to cinema processor AES in audio cable, one GPIO cable, two HDD door keys. Next, Remove the carton containing the server's hard drives. When you open the box, you will find printed HDD installation instructions to assist you with installing the hard drives into the server's chassis. Now carefully remove the server from its packaging and place it into the rack. Depending on your specific installation, you may need another person to assist you with holding the server while you secure the server into the rack using the rack screws and the screwdriver. Now you will need to install the hard drives that came included into the server's packaging. Using a hard drive door key that was included in the accessory kit, insert the key into the hard drive door lock to unlock and open the HDD door. Insert all the drives into the HDD slots. Make sure that you securely lock them into place by closing the gray locking latch until you hear a click. Verify that all hard drives are installed correctly. You can now lock the hard drive door. If you are using an external keyboard or mouse, connect the keyboard into the PS2 connector on the back of the server that is indicated as purple, and connect the mouse into the PS2 connector that is indicated as green. You can also use the USB ports to connect your external keyboard and mouse. Next, you need to connect one end of the VGA cable into the VGA connector. Now connect an ethernet cable into the ethernet port labeled ETH0 and the other end to the digital projector. Now connect an ethernet cable into the ethernet port labeled ETH1 and the other end to the theater automation device. Next, to enable the front LCD touchscreen, plug the other end of the VGA cable into the VGA connector located near the top rear of the connector panel. Now you can connect the AES audio cable to the AES connector, then plug the other end to your audio processor. Now connect your HDSCI cables into the back of the server. The lower connector is for the HDSCI Link B and the top one is for the HDSCI Link A. 
the other end of these cables need to be connected to the HDSDI inputs of the digital projector. It is very important that you connect your power cables after you have installed your hard drives and connected your cables. Now that you have connected all your cabling, it is time to power up the digital server by opening the hard drive door on the front panel and depressing the on and off switch. Wait for the server to boot up completely. The first step of the installation is to configure the IP addresses for the server. To do this, go to Menu, Control Panel, Networking Configuration, and then click on the Start button. Or go to Menu, System, Networking Configuration. In either case, you will be presented a window asking for the root password. See your system administrator for this password. When you have been given the root password, type it in and select Enter or use the OK button. An Ethernet networking configuration window will appear. The window will ask you for your system's host name. Typically, this is used to differentiate a server in an auditorium. In this example, we will key in Screen 1. Press the Enter key. Next, you'll be asked to key in your system's domain name. This will be dependent on your specific networking setup. In this example, we will simply use the default name of dc.dramylabs.com. Press the Enter key. Next, you'll be asked if you want to configure Ethernet 0. This will be dependent on how you are configuring your ports and if you are using both ports. In this example, we will configure Ethernet 0 to connect to our projector, so enter Yes. You will then be prompted to select if this is a removable device. In this example, we will select No as the port is fixed onto the motherboard. Next, you will be prompted with a window asking if you want to automatically configure device as DHCP. Since in this example, there is no router present and we are using a switch, we will need to do the IP address manually and we will select No. Press the Enter key. Then we need to input the device's IP address. In this example, we will key in 10.10.1.15. Press the Enter key. You will then be prompted with a window asking to key in the IP address of the device's gateway router. And in this example, we are not using a router, so we will leave this blank. Press the Enter key. Next, you will be presented a window requesting that you input the device's subnet mask. It is important that the subnet mask from the projector and the Doremi server match. Press the Enter key. Next, you will be presented a window asking to configure Ethernet 1. Depending on your network, you may not need to configure this one. In this example, we are going to use Ethernet 1 as our media network, so we will select the Yes option. The next window will ask if it is a removable device. Select No because this is fixed to the motherboard. You will then be presented a window asking if you want to automatically configure the device with DHCP. In this example, we will select No so that we can manually address it. It is important to note that Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 1 should be on a different subnet. In this example, we will key in the IP address of 192.168.100.15. Press the Enter key. The next window will ask for the IP address of the device's gateway router. Again, in this example, there is no router present, so we will leave it blank. Press the Enter key. Next, you'll be presented a window requesting that you input the device's subnet mask. In this example, we will key in 255.255.255.0. Press the Enter key. Next, you'll be presented with a window asking for the IP address of your system's domain name servers. If you do have a DNS or domain name servers applicable, then you will want to type in the IP address for it. In this example, we do not, so we will leave it blank. Press the Enter key. Next, the server will configure all the IP addresses you keyed in. To confirm that the IP address did register properly, you will want to go to Menu, Dermy Labs, Diagnostic Tools. You can then verify the IP address for Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 1 in the respective fields. To close out the window, click on the Quit button on the lower right hand side of the window. First, you need to check the current date and time setting on the server. To do this, move your cursor so that it hovers over the time display window located in the bottom right hand corner of the display. 
A pop-up window appears to display the server's current day, date, time, and year setting. To verify the server's time zone setting, simply go to Menu, System, Terminal. The terminal window will appear. Next, log in as root user by keying in SU followed by Enter. You will be prompted for a password. See your system administrator for this password. Then type in the password. You will then be taken to the next command line. Type in date followed by enter. You are now able to view the current date, time, followed by the time zone. To change the time zone, type RWDO space TZCONFIG followed by enter. In this demonstration, the server is set up for US Pacific time zone. You will then be prompted with a message, do you want to change that? Key in the letter Y to change the time zone. You are then presented with a screen displaying a reference chart providing a numbering system for each geographical area. In this example, we will select a US time zone as represented with a number 3. Type the number 3 in, followed by enter. You are then provided with a message to enter in the name of the city or the time zone. In this example, we are going to select the Hawaiian time zone by typing Hawaii followed by enter. You will then be displayed a confirmation of the time zone selected along with the UTC or coordinated universal time, which is a standard based on the international atomic time. Please allow 10 to 15 seconds for the new time to be reflected in the right hand corner display window. Click the X button on the terminal window to close out the terminal screen. The following provides information on how to set up the device manager on your server. You will need to use the device manager setup when you want to add a device like a projector. To do this, go to Menu, Control Panel, Device Manager, Start. Or you can go to Menu, Dermy Labs, Device Manager. To add a device, click on the Add button at the top left hand side of the window. A Add Device window will appear listing all the devices you can add. These include projector, CSS device, a raw device, note that we do not have a library for these, an ECNA, a junior, an ISE1, a subtitling engine, or any other device that is licensed based that may be added in the future. An example would be a Dolby DFC100 or a Real D license. In this example, we will click the projector and then click on the Add button. You will then be presented a setup window. In the field labeled Identifier, this is where you will key in the name of the projector. In this example, we will add a Barco projector. In the dropdown of the projector model, you can select from either a Christie, Barco, NEC, Doremi, or Kinetin. In this example, we will select Barco. Next, you need to specify if it is a Series 1 or a Series 2 projector. In this example, we will select the Series 2. Notice that when you select a Series 2, the vendor IP address window grays out. That is because a Series 2 projector only has a DLP IP address. Next, you'll need to key in the DLP head IP address of the projector. In this example, we will key in 10.10.1.12. .10 dot one two. Since this is our only projector, we will select it as a primary projector. If you are using the dual projectors for 3D, your left projector will be the primary projector and your right one will be the non-primary, or select it as no. There is a test button to ping the projector. In this example, since we are not currently connected to a projector, we receive a failed message. To add another device, click on the add button. In this example, we will add a subtitling engine since the Series 2 projectors do not support a subtitling license engine. Select the subtitling engine and then select the Add button. The default identifier automatically comes up so you do not need to key in anything and is automatically enabled. Should you want to disable the subtitling engine, simply uncheck the Enabled box and it will become grayed out to signify that we are not using it. In this example though, we want to enable the subtitling engine so we will select the Enable box. Next, you'll need to click on the Save button. You will be prompted for an administrative password. See your system administrator for this password and type it in and select the OK button. Now your change will be saved. Select the Quit button to exit out of the Device Manager screen.